Talk to me. If you thought waiting for the atomic bomb to explode in Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer was the epitome of suspense building, then don't start casually drinking your sodas yet. These horror films have surpassed expectations and have left audiences concerned about this ability to sleep and worried about demonic possessions. Welcome to See Next. Today, we're ranking the top 10 best horror movies of 2023 so far. Get your popcorn ready, set, and let's go. Amy. Meanie. Miney. You. Number 10, Cobweb. It's okay. It was just a bad dream. Let's clear the proverbial cobwebs of truly terrifying horror films we've been missing with this first gem. Samuel Bodwin's Cobweb portrays young Peter, a boy who's plagued by what many of us would consider to be their worst case terrifying scenario. Have you ever thought about what you would do if you heard a mysterious, insidious feeling tapping noise from inside your bedroom wall? You'd be counting down the hours to someone's demonic possession or the day a slasher killer would jump out at it. In Cobweb, the villain remains unseen for quite some time. Cobweb also has the components of a memorable horror flick that will leave you ridden with nightmares. A claustrophobic little boy, suspicious parents, and yes, a creepy, creaky old house that seems more sinister than welcoming. Mom? Number nine, The Boogeyman. Katie, there's something in my room. You believe me, don't you? Yes, it's The Boogeyman, and it may be Stephen King's scariest story yet. The Harper sisters, Sadie and Sawyer, are starting what turned out to be the heartbreaking and traumatizing journey of grieving their mother. It all swiftly goes downhill when one of their therapist's dad's patients curses them with a supernatural entity one that preys on pain, grief, and family suffering. The director, Savage, asserts it's the scariest King movie, and it's shaping up to be around the world. In fact, The Boogeyman had to be recut, because the original version was too terrifying. Test audiences were so scared that they missed vital details. The fact that we, the not a screen test audience, don't see The Boogeyman for the longest time makes him more haunting. Dad, you have to listen to me! Okay, I'm listening. <laughs> Sweetheart, let me handle it. Number 8, The Pope's Exorcist. We have more questions for you, Father Mort. You have a problem with me. You talk to my boss. The Pope. Based on a true story is a terrifying premise for any horror movie. But for one that's about the Vatican chief exorcist, who in real life notoriously performed over 50,000 exorcisms. Feast your eyes on The Pope's Exorcist. Father Gabriel Amorth, the founder of the International Association of Exorcists. Reality and fiction blurs because the movie dives into real terrifying events, such as Emmanuel Orlandi's disappearance and the actual Spanish Inquisition, and Amorth's beliefs about evil such as, and this is real, Harry Potter. Amorth maintains that a good percentage of possessions are psychological, but the one in the movie definitely was real. Whatever you do, you only do because God allows it. Hello. Number seven, Bo is afraid. I'm visiting my mother tomorrow. Do you ever wish that she was dead? What? Joaquin Phoenix's characters continue to suffer. This time in Bo is afraid, from the moment he exited his mother's womb, Bo has been suffering on a scale that's so disturbing that the movie has been compared to Midsummer. A nightmare that never ends, full of dizzying twists and grotesque scenes that must have left the actors traumatized. What makes us afraid is how wild the events are in terms of not knowing if the disturbing scenes are real or if they're conjured by Bo's mind. Bo is afraid accomplishes all these feats without Midsommar's quintessential gory content, but the endless cycle of nightmares, both true and false, is chilling. I am so sorry for what your daddy passed down to you. Number six, The Last Voyage of Demeter. He's coming! Have you ever heard of bottleneck episodes in TV shows? They typically feature limited cast and locations. 
For the last voyage of the Demeter, the setting is nearly uniform. The ill-fated merchant ship Demeter, mentioned as the ship that ran aground after a storm in Bram Stoker's 1897's Dracula. Picture this. As if the open waters weren't terrifying enough, the claustrophobic feeling of being utterly trapped with the malicious, sinister presence on your ship. Andrea of Redel plunges you in this horror situation with a petrifying insistence on foregoing CGI, relying on terrifying storytelling and invoking true horror from the audience. By the way, this is coming from the director of the autopsy of Jane Doe, so be prepared for a nightmare. Evil is on board. Powerful evil. We call him Dracula. Number five, The Blackening. Where are you going? Go for the fuse box. What kind of house is this? Seven friends band together for a wild weekend at a picturesque cabin is how all the good horror movies start. It's almost like an Agatha Christie novel. Seven go in, how many will come out? This group finds themselves locked in with a psycho killer. The Blackening is based on a Comedy Central sketch by Dwayne Perkins, who co-stars in and co-wrote the film. It's equal parts throw your popcorn scare jump scares, genuinely terrifying scenes, and comedy that will take you off guard. Time's up. We need a plan. Don't say it. Don't you dare. We don't say this, don't say it. We have to split up. Number four, Evil Dead Rise. It's me. Don't let it take my baby. Is Evil Dead Rise too scary? That is the question on many's minds as they watch Alyssa Sutherland, who embodies what might be horror's too antagonistic antagonist, Mummy the Deadite, taunt her children from the other side of the room. Petrifying is an adequate description. Scarring is another. Gory, blood, possession, nightmarish, and definitely not kid-friendly are other descriptions. The setting for Evil Dead Rise is a high-rise apartment building. After someone messes with the relic they definitely shouldn't mess with, true evil is unleashed and it targets this family. Dread slowly builds and escalates into chase and haunting scenes that will have chills run down your spine. So that we could stay one happy family. <laughs> Number three, Megan. Hi, Megan. I'm Katie. It's nice to meet you, Katie. Do you want to hang out? To quote the Taylor Swift song, it's nice to have a friend, but just not this horrifying doll robot friend. Megan is the worst of artificial intelligence coming to life. She's programmed to be a glorified babysitter and a child's best friend. When Gemma, its designer, finds herself looking after her orphan niece, she leaves Megan as a companion to her. Megan then proceeds to do as all murder dolls do. She talks, haunts, and murders, often violently. Does she talk? Make her say something. Stop! Don't! Megan! You should probably run. Number two, Scream 6. We share a certain history. Will Ghostface ever let Jenna Ortega go? Unlikely. Jenna Ortega and Melissa Barrera's characters have taken refuge in New York City, leaving behind Woodsboro and all its Ghostface memories, only for the killer to haunt them through the streets of the city that never sleeps. What makes Scream 6 so fantastic is how it portrays its homage to its predecessors. Scream 6 also delves into at-the-edge-of-your-seat horror feats. That 50s song crooning in the background of the sisters crawling on the floor of a shop while Ghostface chases them? Chills. You got a problem here, guy? Before we reveal our first pick, let's look at some honorable mentions. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. The Nun 2. This thing, it's come back for me. This demon was once an angel. Who's Sarah the Bone Woman? Felicidades. Ya se te estaba pasando el tren. ¿Estás contenta? Cocaine Bear. Beth, we should go. Sick. I thought you were spending quarantine alone. What are you doing here? I wanted to see you, and quarantine can be fun. Insidious, the red door. Can you hear me? I feel like I'm getting closer to something. Or something's getting closer to me. <sighs> Infinity Pool. I've been waiting six years for your second book. Is it coming out soon? 
I'm working on it. Number one, talk to me. Cannot go for more than 90 seconds. Am I clear? What happens after 90 seconds? <laughs> Don't want to stay. Talk to the hand is a phrase often uttered by today's youth who likely haven't yet seen this movie or they retire the phrase. Talk to me is about a group of teenagers likely marked for life after they find out their own version of Ouija, their ability to use an embalmed hand to talk to spirits. On the surface, it's a movie about a haunted hand and possession. Deeper than that, it's about grief. Mia's over her mother, desperately wanting a connection and even addiction. So my mom, she was trying to reach out. Yeah. And those are the top 10 horror movies of 2023 so far. What did you think? Did we miss one of your favorites? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell below to be notified of new content. Thanks for watching.